So the point or the highlight of our uh, topic for today is hypothesis testing. So this is again your teacher Jenny joined me for a guide, a video guide on how to do hypothesis testing if you've got two samples. So our problem here is our research team wants to investigate the usefulness of relaxation training for reducing levels of anxiety in individuals experiencing stress. They identify 30 people at random from a group of 100 who have high-stress jobs. The 30 people are divided into two groups. One group acts as a control group. They receive no training. The second group of 15 received the relaxation training. The subject in each group are then given an anxiety inventory. The raw data appear below evaluate their experiment using the level of significance at 5%. Assume it is a two-tailed test. So let us now do our hypothesis testing. We have first, we are to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis here is there is no significant difference on the levels of anxiety between the control subject and the relaxation subject. So since we have here, we are trying to test out whether uh, there is something of a big difference between the two experiments, one of which the group is being controlled with no training at all, and the other one is with a relaxation. The alternative hypothesis here is there is a significant difference in the levels of anxiety between the control subject and the relaxation subject. Let's now go to step number two. So this time we are determining the appropriate test to be used. Now since we've got two samples here, the first group, the control group, the second group, the relaxation group, so since they are two groups, that means we are now doing an independent t-test. So let us go for uh, step number three. Step number three here is determining the critical value C. So first, we are going to identify what type of tail test are we having here. So since... This is only for uh, checking whether there is significant difference or not. Then automatically, we've got a two-tailed test for this. And then we are going to signify as well the level of significance. Level of significance according to the problem is 5%. So we have that as 0 0.05. And then we are going to identify the C. So how do we identify the C? Okay, so we have now the control group and the relaxation group results on the level of anxiety for each. We wanted to test out and compute for the critical value and so with the test statistic here. So since they are of independent uh, samples, so we are going to do independent t-test by clicking on the data analysis of your Excel. And then there are two types of uh, t-tests for independent t-tests. We have two sample assuming equal variances and two sample assuming unequal variances. So which one among these two are we going to choose? So first we are going to check on whether we are going to assume equal variances or assume unequal variances. So we are going to go back to the scores and then we are going to do the descriptive statistic. So let us now do, go to the data analysis, click on that, and then look for the descriptive statistic. And then click OK. So once you're there, you are going to input the range on the first variable. And 
then click on the output range and choose where you want to put that one but be careful sometimes your input range will change so that is why you have to double check that one and then click on where you wanted to put the output range and then make sure that your summary statistics is clicked and then click OK. So here you go with your result. So out from there, you can find your sample variance from the first variable, which is 44. So next, let's find our sample variance for the second variable by clicking on data analysis again. Click on descriptive statistic and input the range of the second variable and then input the desired output range so once again be careful on that as to not change the input range then summary statistic is already clicked so click ok so there you go with a value you can find your sample variance in the result you've got 38.4285 but mm, Take note, we are going to change or round off our values on the result to the thousands place or three decimal places. So we can click on this one so that we are going to change the number of decimal places. We can increase and decrease that one using this button. And same goes with the other column. Okay, now we are now comparing our sample variances as a result of the two variables here. So we will be now playing the rule of thumb. So how do we play the rule of thumb? We are going to get the ratio of the bigger sample variance over the smaller sample variance. How, how do we do that? We can use the formula for the Excel, type in equal, and then click on the 44 on the sample variance. Then click on or type in slash for the division and then click on the smaller variance. So that is now the ratio. So the rule of thumb says that once you've got the ratio of the bigger sample variance over the smaller sample variance, if the result is less than four, then that means to say that you can assume that the variances of the two are equal. So since then, we are going to go back to our data and then click on data analysis, hover over to the t-test with two sample assuming equal variances, and then click on that. You can double click that or you can click on that one and click OK. Then notice we have variable one range. Click on the variable one range. Uh, you can click on the first variable. And then variable two range. Click on the second variable range. And then we have the alpha is set as 0 0.05. That's correct. We don't need to input hypothesized mean. Uh, hypothesized mean difference for that one. Now click on the output range. Now notice your variable one range changes again, so please be careful on that. You can uh, redo that one by clicking on the variable one range again. And then click on the output range. Click to where you want your output to be. And then click OK. So there you go with your result. So your result here says we've got there the P value of the one tail, which is 0 0.049507. We have critical value on one tail. We have p value in two tail, 
we have critical value on two tail. Now always remember that you are going to round off your values up to uh, three decimal places or the thousands place. You click again the home and then look for this icon. You can decrease the decimal there. And then there you go. So what do we need as the information will be based on what we had on three, step three. We had there two tails. So that means to say we are going to get the critical value on two tail and the P value on the two tail. So we have P value two tail. We have 0 0.099. And then we've got the critical value on two tail. We have 2.048. And there you go. So since we have now the result, what we are going to do is we're going to continue with the process. But this time, what we are having here is um, a critical value, which is 2.048. This is based on the two-tailed test uh, on the result here. So critical value is somewhere here. But then take note, this is two-tailed, so we have to add there a sign, which is a positive negative sign. So we need to say critical value is at 2.048 or negative 2.048. Okay, so for our test statistic here, so all we have to do is to look at the values in here. Uh, we have different values for that one. If you try to look at the table, we've got plenty of those. And again, what we are trying to get here are the information on the T statistics, so which is 1.706. So that will be our value for T. And since we are using P value in comparison, comparison with our alpha so we will be getting the value of the p-value or the probability value also here under the two tails so we have this as our i mean this one as our value which is 0 0.099 so again in writing our data analysis report we don't need to write the zero before the decimal point and then we are ready to do our decision making based on that one. Okay, the last part of hypothesis testing is decision making. So we should uh, make our decision here based on the p-value and so with the alpha that we set a while ago, which is the 0 0.05. So since you've got 0 0.099, which is bigger than the 0 0.05 a while ago, so our decision is do not reject a sub o or the null hypothesis so we need to say we are accepting the null hypothesis interpretation of that one is there is no significant difference on the levels of anxiety between the control subject and the relaxation subject so we need to say that the relaxation training for reducing levels of anxiety in individuals experiencing stress is not useful at all. So once again, this is your teacher, Jenny. Thank you for joining me in on this video as the guide in hypothesis testing.